Um, hello, so today we are going to take a look at this problem called permutations and the problem just says that we want to return all possible permutations of a list of distinct integers. Um, so we get a list of distinct integers and we want to return um, all possible permutations. So for example here you can see in the first example I have 1, 2 and I want to return um, the permutations of that are just 1, 2 and 2, 1. The second example, 1, 2, 3, all possible permutations are 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 3, 2, and then putting 2 first, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, and 3, 2, 1. So these are all the possible permutations of these three numbers. So when I'm just given a list of integers, um, we want to return all possible permutations. Um, so this is a pretty famous backtracking problem. Um, it's one of the first examples of um, backtracking, but uh, let's just see how we can solve it. Um, okay, so what is the idea of what, so what can we do here to fix it, uh, to uh, solve this problem? So I have here an example, one, two, three. So what we can do is, well, we could just fix one element. So just take one, right, and then permute two, three. So that will give us um, the permutations possible are two, three, and three, two. And so if we add one into these, well, we will get one, two, three, and then we will get one, three, two, right? So these are all the permutations that start for with one. And then we could also as well um, basically try for all of them, right? The second one would be, okay, let's just fix two, right? And then permute the rest, which is one, three. And so that will give us here um, one, three, and then three, one, which would mean that with this, we will get 2, 1, 3, and then 2, 3, 1, right? So you get the idea. Each time we pick one, fix one number and pick, pick that in, the, in our chosen um, permutation, like the permutation that we are currently processing, and then recurs on the rest, right? So this is the, the main idea behind backtrack, behind uh, backtracking for this solution. But we will need to find two important things, right? We need to find the base case because backtracking is a recursive procedure. So we need to find the base case. And then we need to find what are the choices that we will be making, right? What are the choices? Because those at each time will recurse on each choice, right? And then once we have the choices, then we can just do the backtracking um, uh, procedure. Backtracking usually has this way of doing things where you, we can choose something right so when we, ha we have the choices we choose one of them and then explore which this is the recursive call and then we end choose and so that for the next iteration for the next choice we don't go with the state where we have picked something um, now for this permutation what is our base case so our base case is when we don't have nothing to like the we, we have nothing more to take from Right, but let me just clarify something that also is useful to know here with backtracking, which is what is the state that we will, we will need here? Well, for each iteration here, what did I need? Well, I need two things. I need what have I chosen so far, right? Which in this case, for example, it's one, and then I recurse on the rest. And then what are the remaining? So you can see here when I recurse it, I removed one from the from the elements, right? So we need that and we need the remaining elements, right? So these are the two things that we need in each call. What have I chosen so far? And then what, what is remaining? So for example, in this case, I have chosen one. And then what's remaining for me is two, three. And so after that, let's say I choose two. So if I choose two, then, then what's chosen so far is one, two, and what's remaining is three. And then I choose three, so I have one, two, three, and my remaining is empty, and at that point I'm at the base case. Now let's try with two here. What would we have if we, for the one picking two? So when we're picking two, I would pick two, right? It's in the chosen, and what's remaining? Well, I remove two from the list of elements, so it's just one, three. And then I pick one, for example. So if I pick one, I have two, one. And remaining is just three, and then I pick two, one, 
I pick three, so I have two, one, three, and then I have an optical list, and that's the base case. And so I add this to my solutions, right? So the idea here is the state that we need is this. So this is the state that we need for our recursive function. And the state here, it means what, what we will have to pass as a parameter to the recursive function, right? And so here, my base case, I know that I'm done when the remaining is empty, right? And the state here, let's just write that down. The state is the chosen so far, right? And then the remaining. These are just the variables that I'm going to use to denote these two things here. Um, now for the base case, well, as I said, it's when the list is empty. So in, that's when the length of the remaining is equal to zero. That's my base case. What are the choices that I'm making each time? So each time, let's say with two, three, I can either pick two first or pick three first. And with one, two, three here, I can either pick one first, pick two first, or pick three first. So it's every element in the remaining list, right? I can't take anything that is not in the remaining list because then I would take the element multiple times, right? So the choices here are the elements in the remaining. In remaining list, right? And so to go through these, I can just do a for loop, right? Um, just in case I need the index, I could just do num here in the remaining, or if I need the index, I could do I num in enumerate remaining, right? So this is this is the way I can iterate through my choices. Now, what are these steps? My step for choosing, and then my step for exploring, and then the end choose. So for choosing, well, to choose an element, I just add it to the chosen list, right? So I could just add it to the chosen list, which means just say chosen that append the number that I chose in the choices above. The explore is just recursing, right? So I just call, let's call my function here, the helper. So the two parameters that I need to pass to it are chosen and remaining. But one thing I forgot to do here, which is, so when choosing an element, I add it to the remaining, but I also remove it from, I add it to the chosen, but I also remove it from the remaining. You can see here, I removed one. In the next state, I have only three. So what this would mean here is that for the remaining, I will need to remove the element that I just chosen so that I don't pick it again, right? And now what is my end choose? Well, end choose is just usually the reverse of the choosing, right? So I need to remove the element that I've chosen. So what that would mean here, let me write it. So what that would mean is chosen that um, I could remove the last element, but removing the last element, this element that I added here, that's the last element that I added, right? So I could just use pop to remove the last element in Python. And to re-add the element that I removed from remaining, I could just say remaining. And I could insert it at the position that I removed it from, right? So I'll say I, and I want to add num. So what this would mean is that here I would need to do I here so I can get the index, right? Because here I'm enumerating from remaining. So I could just say enumerate remaining. And that's pretty much it for my for what I need to do with backtracking. So with backtracking, the first thing to think about is what is the state that I will pass in my recursion? And in my case here, it's the what I've chosen so far for the permutation and what the elements that are remaining. Then I will need to think about the base case. And then I will need to think about what are my choices. And for each choice, what should I do in the choosing step? And what should I do in the recursive step? The recursive step usually is just passing, calling the function with the parameters that we modified, modified in the choosing step. And then the end choosing, which is just reverting what we did in the choosing step. And once we have all of these, uh, we'll be, we can write our backtracking function here. So let's write our backtracking function. So we will need to say um, def. Um, and the function, let's call it permute. Right? Um, let's say we get a list. Get a list of numbers like this. Um, what we need is we need a helper with these two states, right? So that we can recurse. So we need to create that. Because we want the caller to be able to just pass the numbers and not worry about the parameters of the recursive function here, right? So our helper function will need to have both chosen and remaining, right? 
but here to call our this function inside the the, the the parent function the permute we will start the call with what what is the chosen initially at the first step it's just an empty list we haven't chosen anything right and then what is the remaining that's the entire list of the array we haven't chosen anything else but we need a res here to contain all the permutations and that's what we need to return and so our helper function here Every time we reach the base case, which means chosen is complete, we need to add um, the chosen array to the list of permutations because that's a permutation there, right? And so here, let's do our base case. So we said our base case is when if uh, the length of the remaining is equal to zero. In Python, we could just write that with not remaining, which means it's empty. So if remaining is empty, then at that point, we can just say res, add, choose, chosen, and that's pretty much it. Otherwise, now we do our choices, which we said here, we will need to go through the remaining elements. And so i, the index, num is the element, in we will enumerate remaining. And um, we will do the choose step first, right? So the choose step, as we said, is just adding to the um, adding the element to the chosen array. So what that would mean here is we will do chosen dot append the number, and then we will need to add it to remove it from the remaining. So we would do remaining dot remove the number, and then we'll need to call the recursive function. So helper. Um, let me give ourselves some space, some space here, we'll write this down later. Um, now the helper function, we need to call it with the two states, chosen, remaining, and then we'll do the unchoose step here. So let's just clarify this a little bit. So this is the choose, and this is the explore, and then we'll do the unchoosing, which is removing from chosen because we added to it and so to remove the to remove the last element we just added we can just do pop then for the remaining we'll need to re-add the element that we removed so that would mean remaining that insert at position i we need to insert the element and this step here is the in choose step and now we are done right and so let's just put back our call here for the permute function. So the call would need to be just at the same level as the helper definition. And so we will need the res array that we add to it here, right? And then we will need um, to launch the first call to helper, which we can do with uh, just passing, chosen as an empty list, right? And then the remaining is the entire list of the elements. And then at the end, we can return res. Cool. Um, so that's pretty much it for the solution here. Um, now let's code it up, uh, run it on some examples, and make sure it, it works correctly. Um, OK, so I wrote down here the solution that we just went through in the overview. Um, the main difference here um, is this chosen here, what I needed to copy, this is equivalent to copy. Um, and the reason behind this is because we remove the elements later on um, and we change the array itself. So if we don't copy it, this one would be affected. And so we don't want to do that. And so this is why we are doing this copy here. But otherwise, this is the base case. These are the choices. This is the choosing step. Um, and then we do the recursive call and then we end choose. And those are that's pretty much it. Now I have a couple of examples here that we can just make sure this works correctly. So let's run it. So you can see the permutations of one and two, one, two, and two, one, permutation of one, two, three, the correct permutation, same thing with one, two, three, four, and we have a lot of them for one, two, three, four, five as well. Um, so this works. Um, there is a small optimization we can do here. Um, it's, it's good with backtracking problems to write them really explicitly with the uh, template of base case, choices, choose step, function call, recursive call, explore, and then end choose. But just because of the nature of this, because we are just adding and then we remove later on, 
we could get rid of these two and just say chosen class name. So what we will be passing is the array modified, right? Because we are adding the element, but we don't need to remove because we didn't change chosen itself, right? And the same thing for remaining, instead of removing and then inserting again, we could just not remove and no need to insert then. But here we will need to pass the remaining without the element at position i. So to do that, we could just take everything before i and then add everything after i. So that would be i plus one. And that's pretty much it here. So this simplifies the call a little bit, but still doing the same work. So if run this, it still works in the same way, right? Um, but it's always a good idea to write it in the exact template format um, to make just to um, to be able to write the solution. And then once you get used to it, um, you can start writing in simpler format. Um, yeah, so that's it pretty much for this permutation uh, problem um, and its solution using backtracking. Um, thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Bye.